episode starts basically with Lionel um, having handed Tess something down in his will, or basically to any heir, um, of this little Kryptonian box thing. And it's kind of like a Rubik's Cube, or I know there's something else that it's kind of like, you know, you twist them together back and forth until you get these symbols cross. Um, it's a little like, uh, you know, how um, police will um, look at, like, different bullets and try and match them to see which fire, if they fire from the same gun, kind of the same thing as that. Um, so Clark calls her and tells her to meet him at Cadmus, where he finds out that the Lex clone has escaped. And, um, it's actually, he also finds out that the Lex clone had something, it was connected with Tess, that she had been hiding him all this time. So Clark is pretty ticked off. He, he, he realizes that, you know, Tess has betrayed his trust, and he's not very happy about it. So he finds the box in her purse, and he's like, you know, what the heck is this? And, you know, he twists it until the thing locks into place, and then, whoosh, he's suddenly in, you know, an alternate reality where Lionel Luther, played by the amazing John Glover, is back and alive. One thing I want to point out really quickly. If it has been so simple to, you know, get into this alternate reality by clicking these two things together, why hasn't Lionel done this before? If that's, you know, how easy it is to operate alien technology, I think Lionel Luther would have thought, Oh, maybe I put two and two together, and I get, oh my gosh, alternate reality. And yeah, there's probably this argument that uh, it's Clark who has to touch the thing to make it work. We will get onto that later. Trust me. Clark ends up in this alternate reality where he's actually Lionel Luther's son, believe it or not. And um, he's been raised kind of like Lex, you know. He's become this sinister, um, edgier, basically a Luther, lack of a better term, kind of person. Um, and he's also, oh my gosh, he is in a relationship with Tess. And yeah, he is technically her brother. And yeah, you're going to probably argue, well, it's an alternate reality, he's an alien, he's adopted, she's his half-sister. It's still incest! Ugh! Like, people, I love Star Wars, but every time I watch Empire Strikes Back now, and I see Luke and Leia making out, even that peck on the cheek and A New Hope, it still creeps me out. Because we know, and here, they know, and we know, it's creepy. Um, there's no way around it, it's just creepy. Anyway, um, so we also find out that the Clark Luther knows about the mirror box, and that's kind of the other thing that doesn't make sense. Like I was saying before, if Clark, and she says like he's known all about it all this time, we find out later that Clark Luther hates this reality, the one that he's been born into. Because he doesn't like Lionel, and, you know, he wants to be able to run his own life. He doesn't like being under Lionel's wing. Under Lionel's wing. Why wouldn't he have done this before? Hello? Why would he not have used the mirror box before to jump into another world? Simple question, really. I don't know. He obviously... And, like, I would have thought, like, originally, well, maybe he has done this before, but, you know, he's never um, let people know about it. He's just gone off once or twice, killed a couple people, come back home. Every time that he goes, or Clark goes, they switch universes. And Clark's never been here before, obviously. So he's never used it. And Clark, no Clark has used it until this episode. So, yeah, it doesn't really make sense why um, he would never have used it. Because, obviously, if you've got something of that much power in the hands of somebody who is crazy, homicidal, a tyrant, they're probably going to use it. Especially if it's so simple as lining up two and two. 
Um, and anyway, he finds out that also Lionel runs Metropolis in this universe. He owns a Daily Planet. He basically runs the city. Um, and he's, you know, uh, also finding out that Oliver Queen is um, married to, well, either engaged or married to Lois. And uh, that, oh yeah, he's also in the persona in this universe as Ultraman. Who, if you know the comics, is part of the crime syndicate in the alternate universe where Superman and the other Justice League members are evil, yada, yada, yada. I just went on a nerd rant. Um, and so, in the meantime, the Clark Luthor has jumped to the real universe, the one that Clark Kent's from. Uh, it's going to get really tricky for me to keep track of which Clark is who and which universe is where. Just roll with me, people. Um, and then, uh, he's going to test to, you know, he's like, Oh, Lionel's dead. Lex is dead. Oh, this is a great universe. I love this place. I can do whatever I want. Once again, why would you have never come here in the first place if it's so simple to use that box? Hmm? Why wouldn't you? Um, and so he's also got this, uh, scar on his arm, which is like, um, the Luther family crest that was burned onto him through what he calls Gold K by Lex. That's possibly Gold Kryptonite. Actually, it would make a lot of sense if it was Gold Kryptonite, um, but we never get clarified. We don't see the thing. Um, and then he's, you know, trying to find the box so that he can destroy it and stay in this universe. Tess, meanwhile, finds Lois and tries to get it, but Clark, obviously, because of Clark Luther. With the super hearing, he um, picks up on it, and he's basically like, give me the box or I'll kill you. Clark Kent, in the meanwhile, is in the Luther universe. And, um, where was I at that point? Oh, yeah, he goes to try and find out where the box is so we can get back home. And he goes to the fortress, and he's, like, trying to figure out if jor knows about it. Lionel has actually shut off the Kryptonian fortress with some of his technology. So the superior alien technology of Krypton is brought down by a couple of firewalls and a couple of PCs and Macs. Bravo, Jarrell. Bravo. I'm sorry, but when I saw that, I was like, this is just stupid. Um, and then he finds out that, uh, in this universe, um, or the Luther universe, Clark has killed Lex. And, uh, Tess has been disowned by Lionel. He actually calls her, she, she's got, like, a Magdalene complex, um, because of, uh, her relationship with Clark. Um, and she gets kicked out of the, the Luther office by him. And Lionel tells Clark to go to Oliver Queen to get the mirror box. So he goes off and, and does that. He kidnaps Lois to try and use her as bait, and um, then Oliver uses Kryptonite to try and weaken him at, weaken him at Watchtower. You gotta kind of wonder why Oliver would have Watchtower in this universe, but hey, small plot hole, and I can forgive it. Um, and then he's you know using it against him, and Lionel comes in, and he starts telling Clark, you know. Um, he, he starts, uh, he basically whips out his belt and starts beating him, like a real abusive father, like, you know, the stereotype. Um, and this is something that I really didn't get. Well, okay, I get why he's doing it, but this is something that I was a little bit confused about. Lionel's not an idiot, and granted, yeah, he can't see the lack of a scar on Clark Kent's arm, but... Of all the people to be able to tell, this isn't my son, I think the parent would be able to know better than anybody, this isn't the same person I know. Who is going to know you better than the person who raised you? And yet he's still not able to tell that Clark Kent is putting on an act. I just thought that was interesting. He Like, to the very end, he's like, you're the person I raised. That's his belief or mentality. Um, and then he's like, you know, all I've ever done is worried about you. You think that you're a prisoner here, but I've been the one fearing for my life. I let you kill my son, blah, blah, blah. 
And this is the interesting thing about Lionel, because really the main catalysts that decided his fate in the real universe are absent here. Clark Kent, being raised by the Kents, was the reason that Lionel redeemed himself. If he was under his wing in this universe, he wouldn't have been able to do that. Lex, being the one who killed him in the regular universe, has died years and years ago. So obviously he wouldn't have been able to kill Lionel. So basically what we're showing is, if Lionel was unable to be redeemed not, and was allowed to live, he would have just gotten worse and worse. And that's pretty evident here. So it does add up. And I thought that it was brilliant because he really is a bit of a fascist leader here. He's a tyrant. He's a despot. Um, or despo, however you want to pronounce it. And so then uh, Clark actually like smacks him across the room. He uses the box to try and get back home. And um, then he's confronted by Oliver, Tess, and Lois, who are basically like, is it him? And Lois knows because of love or some hippie crap. Um, and then Clark basically tells Tess when he sees her again, he reminds her that he, he called the Luther, po the Luther blood poison. And he's like, basically, the, the lesson of the story is that no matter what, Lionel was evil. Ouch, dude. Like, do you not remember the Lionel who, you know, like, was protecting your secret? The guy who's actually a good part of the reason that you're the hero you are today. He wasn't a tool when he died in the regular universe. He wasn't the jackass that we remember back in Season 1 that Lex chucked off a building. He was a good man when he died. And obviously Clark doesn't give a crap about that, or he's completely forgotten in the time span of, like, three, four years, he obviously just looks at this and he's like, Lionel was evil, because that's the last Lionel I remember, not the, you know, guy who's been, like, my father's vessel, the man who, you know, tried to make me into a better person, the man who tried to atone for his actions. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, anybody with the name Lionel Luther is just an evil jackass. Like, what the heck? Are you serious? Like, you, you really aren't gonna think of the good things about Lionel. Because he was a good man in the regular universe. He's just he's just remembering how the evil he used to be. And in this alternate reality, that's all he's considering. Anyway, he and Tess have this little, you know, we'll find Lex together motto thing. And then the episode actually ends where we find out that Lionel Luther from the alternate universe is in our universe. And this guy, this newspaper vendor is basically like, Hey, don't I know you? And you're basically smacking yourself in the head as you're watching this scene because it's like, you really don't know who the guy is. Yes, he's been dead three years, but holy crap. Like, the guy's a newspaper vendor. He probably would have seen his face in the papers a couple of times. It's Lionel freaking Luther. Anyway, um, he's like, of course not. I'm from out of town, actually. Um, but I'm glad that I'm back here to see how it all turns out. And he's actually looking right at the camera when he says it, and there's this debate of whether he's breaking the fourth wall or not. Frankly, I can't see what he'd be doing other than breaking the fourth wall, because what else could be re he referring to? Lionel Luther can't see the future. Lionel Luther doesn't know about Darkseid. Lionel Luther doesn't know that his son's dead here, and that he's been cloned. What else could he be talking about aside from the end of Smallville? Really, what else could he be talking about? He obviously is breaking the fourth wall. Why is he doing this? Because John Lover, John Glover is friggin' awesome. That's all I have to say. So yeah, it was a good episode. Granted, there were a couple things that did annoy me a bit, but it's still a good episode, um, and I still liked it.